Well, the rings of power rolled out their first two episodes, and somehow I got through it. There's just nothing here. <laughs> That's the, all that money, and I'm uh, not really seeing it. Um, there's some uh, flashbacks. There was a war. There always is. And uh, it, it all looks spectacular and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it was brief. And the rest of it, hmm. there's a fight with a snow troll, uh, which the, the snow troll is okay, but the uh, fight itself is pretty stupid. And uh, I, I, I think the one of the trailers had a more extended look at that fight. They seem to have cut it real quickly because Galadriel does look like Peter Pan flying on wires in the fight and stuff like that. Maybe that's the one. Uh, it's really stupid. Of course, she's got her whole crew there. They all get wiped out by this monster. Damn near, anyway. But, um, just thrown around, beaten. And then she jumps into action and just whoops its ass. Which, uh, she's bound and determined to find Sauron. So, didn't really know what they were going to do. Had all kind of guessing and suspicions. Uh, that we would meet a young Sauron before he becomes the Dark Lord and all this type of stuff. And they might have done that. No, he's already pretty much in the armor and everything. I mean, you only see him briefly in the flashback. And they've been fighting this war with him and his orc army and all that stuff uh, between the elves and them and uh, for centuries. And uh, her uh, Gladiel's brother dies. And uh, that was her favorite brother, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they did do the Captain Marvel obligatory scene where she's really smart, but the boys, boy elves are are stupid and they make fun of her. And they keep throwing in these lines that they think are so profound, but they don't have the ability to write it. So it's like she she makes this little boat out of paper when she's a little girl, and uh, that one of the boys, man, that'll never float. And it's not meant to float; it's meant to sail. And this is supposed to be, oh, man, that sounds awesome. Well, it, if it doesn't float, it won't sail either. So, <laughs> And, of course, the kid ruins it, and they get in a fight and all this stuff, and her brother comes in who's, you know, a full-grown man. So, I mean, there's quite a gap in years there. But um, whatever, he ends up going and fighting the war and gets killed, and so that's her motivation for the rest of the series, and she becomes Galadriel, warrior princess, and she's the bestest ever. And um, the thing of it is, because she's an elf, so, okay, there's some supernatural elements here of her ability, even though she, once again, looks like a toothpick-limbed small lady. But she's able to uh, climb these mountains with her knife and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but she's accompanied by a squadron of warrior elves, and uh, they all suck, and they get slammed around by this snow troll, and yet she whips it uh, with ease. And it's like, well, wait a minute. If it's the supernatural abilities that elves just have, then why don't they? You know? So it doesn't quite work out that way. And they give you nothing as to, other than her obsession over the death of her brother, is the reasons why she keeps wanting to find Sauron, even though most people now believe he's long dead. Uh, they, they don't find anything. They find an old uh, fortress that he used, and it's all old and broken down. It's been long abandoned and all that sort of stuff. But they find his his mark there, you know. Oh, that, you know, but everybody says, yeah, but it's really old. It's probably been there for centuries. It's, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. And uh, But this is supposed to be something that tells her she's got to go on but the other crew decides, nah, we're done. We almost got killed by a snow troll, even though she killed it pretty easily. So they could have gone on. Or they say, you're gonna, if you're going to keep going, you're going to do it alone. And they all lay down their weapons. Uh, there's a symbol of, uh, you know, this is like a, a mutiny or coup or whatever. <laughs> and so she says, oh, well, damn it. So they go back home. But since she was so badass with the snow troll, it's like, what does she need her squad for, you know? I guess she needed at least one of them because they did this maneuver where this guy holds the sword out and she leaps off of it. So, I don't know. I guess she could have 
stuck it in a tree or something. But anyway, they, they go back, and the king has decided, ah, the war's over, and, uh, and then later on admits, well, maybe Sauron is still alive, but come on. <laughs> what is he, pushing 800? <laughs> come on. And so uh, the heroes get their uh, reward, and then they, surprise, you're all going to heaven. So they're going to send them off to the, the island of heaven. <laughs> And of course, a Gladriel. They almost there. The sky parts, and you're saying, "Wow, it's they really are going into this other dimension and all that stuff." And then, but Gladriel can't let go of her hatred of Sauron, so she grabs her brother's dagger and dives off the boat. So she's in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, she didn't think this through. Uh, so she starts swimming back. Well, you, you needed a ship to get there, so. <laughs> but don't worry, a raft comes along, and she meets some stud. Uh, I don't know if they're supposed to have something between them later on. Usually that's how these things go, but I mean, she has a husband. And, but it doesn't matter. This has nothing to do with the books or anything. It's already so far afield of that. There's no point in even looking for anything there, uh, despite their occasional commentary to the contrary, even though at the same time in the same sentence. So this, we're making it, you know, uh, uh, valid for our world today or some crap like that. I mean, Lord of the Rings is uh, third globally in popularity only to the Bible and the Quran, <laughs> which are two religious tomes that the two enormous religious faiths hold as sacred and true, you know, whereas everybody else thinks the Lord of the Rings, yeah, it's this fantasy story. It's fun. So it's already reached the world. It doesn't need Amazon to, you know, race swap and gender swap people and all that sort of nonsense. But it did. So there you go. But for what it is, I don't really see the money in it. You know, it's only two episodes, so maybe they got some more spectacular stuff here. But um, the dialogue is terrible. Uh <laughs> I mean, they'll fall back on current uh, dialects and what <laughs> in it and stuff like that. And they can't keep it together. And uh, a lot of it is just them trying to pretend that it's like Lord of the Rings. Uh, you, of course, you got the Harfoots instead of the, the Hobbits. And then uh, the big fallen angel of Gandalf, I suppose, is what everyone assumes and it more than likely is, or he's just a a proto or pseudo Gandalf or later or what have you. But anyway, he, he, he's the mysterious figure and we don't know what much about him. Uh, meanwhile, the signs that the, the orcs are very much alive. Uh, we see one attack. Uh, what's his name? I forget his actual name, but everyone calls him the Don Lemonless. <laughs> He has a human girlfriend. Will they or won't they? <laughs> yeah, she has a son, and oh boy, is it all her husband left? Maybe it's because that's not his son, huh? But the son, instead of finding the ring, because those haven't been made yet, but they're about to. Uh, but the uh, the son finds this uh, artifact of Sauron, and well, now he's touched by Sauron, even though he's. I don't know. Who knows where he is? He's not his spirit in the afterlife or whatever like it is in the Lord of the Rings. And with the only possibility of returning is to get his ring back. Well, as here, I guess there's some connection with this artifact, you know. So they're going to run with that. Uh, so uh, the danger is not over. So it's not only Galadriel. It's uh, Don Lem Lemonless. <laughs> Is also finding out, oh, he gets a duck, a, a caught. We don't see what happens to him. He's digging through a hole after this village has been torched and discovering there's orcs afoot and all that. So they, they get him. I'm sure that's not the last we've seen of him, of course. But nevertheless, that's what the deal is. And then uh, his girlfriend uh, fares better against the orc. Uh, her son helps out. They, they both fight it. Um, but uh, she gets the final straw and then takes. Uh, beheads it and brings the head to the village and tells them we have to evacuate you know whatever and uh oh the threat is real and they're like whoa because you know you know there's always going to be a boss girl uh telling everybody what to do and uh that that that's the the, the the default setting of the show um and all that so um 
Yeah, the Galadriel character is the absolute worst. Uh, she's terrible. Uh, the lines they give her is terrible, so it's not necessarily her fault, but it just uh, it, it's everything you saw in the stupid trailer where she's arguing with Elrond, and uh, you know, uh, you haven't seen what I've seen. I've seen my fair share. You haven't seen what I've seen. You know, it's, it, but now she does do the crazy. She can do the crazy eyes that tells you, oh boy, this this one's a psycho. <laughs> so she'd be really good playing some stalker chick type character and stuff. Uh, so they got that down pat. Uh, and uh, but the, the the thing of it is, is beyond her brother's death. You know, what did she see? Well, she's seen the mark. She gets a vision, and. All that, but you can't say she saw more of the war than he did because they've all been in it. So it give her something, you know, like she stumbled on something more than just a mark where the rest of the elves look at it and say, "Yeah, but it's really old." <laughs> you know? So there's nothing to bolster that moment, and it's it's you know they try to make it intense, like whoa, and it's not, and because the language is terrible, the dialogue it's just it's there's nothing there, so. Uh, I don't know, the second episode is just uh, well, you know, the uh, Don Lemus gets captured by the orcs. <laughs> More mystery about whoever the Gandalf-looking guy is. Uh, he's being helped by uh, the female Frodo, as many have said, which is obviously who she is. She's Nori, I believe her name is, and uh, she already has her own gal pal who will be her Sam. And uh, my guess is they're insinuating that this is Gandalf. And so the original little companion that he had is, well, is Nori. She was the first. And uh, the reason he has a fondness for hobbits is that uh, they remind her of her. And uh, certainly Bilbo and later uh, Frodo remind him of her in those early days. And he's completely uh, beholden to her because she saves him from the crater that he was in. Uh, so, yeah. Could any of this have worked uh, for Lord of the Rings? No. Uh, on its own, in better capable hands? Yeah, n probably not. There's a few things here and there, maybe. But it's all just borrowing from the original Lord of the Rings narrative. You know, there's a terrible evil. Not everybody believes it. There, you know, and all this sort of stuff. Same thing with Game of Thrones. And um, and that's the basic jumping off point at the beginning of the story. Uh, but here, it's obvious it's a lazy, lazy production. The, the work, of course, is the photography, uh, sets. Uh, there's been complaints about the cheapness of the costumes that uh, if you look at it closely... <laughs> You'll see it, but uh, just on uh, watching the show, and they're fine. And uh, some of the actors are okay, uh, but that's the only work. The actual heart of the story is no. And it's just loosely stolen from these appendices that Tolkien wrote. And uh, apparently can't even get that right. I'm no Tolkien expert, but I've heard from quite a few <laughs> and uh, the timeline doesn't work and all that sort of thing. So there was no real attempt there at all. Uh, the Tolkien brand name is there to protect the lackluster uh, effort on this. And then the shielding, of course, is identity politics casting. So uh, preemptively, if you do not accept this, it's because you're a racist and uh, you're a sexist and, and what have you. Uh, mostly those so far. I don't know. They might go into other things. They'll have. I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't. Would they really make Sauron like trans or gay or something? And that's the reason he turned to evil because society wouldn't accept him. And that's what happens. Maybe that would be how, how they do it or something like that. Uh, or Gandalf will be gay. I, you know, maybe they'll get into that too. Uh, but then that'll be the other checkbox that they can exploit and tokenize um, and all that. Uh, and I, and that's always done as shields for lackluster uh, 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 productions uh, that you've seen for years now, and it never, ever works. So, the mind-bogglingly staggering thing here is the money spent on this just to do this. 
The only thing I could have thought of of a Lord of the Rings series would be actually Lord of the Rings. I mean, they keep calling it Lord of the Rings, but it, you know, it's it's not. It's not the story. It's the, you know, it's like it's a prequel series, another prequel series. <laughs> and uh, they could have done a more in-depth adapt adaptation of it. You know? Um, but I guess the you know, the rights wasn't they say hey, they bought the rights well not completely and all this it's spread out all over the place and I mean even Warner Brothers is going to do an animated feature uh, out of Lord of the Rings and stuff like that so maybe it just never could have been done but that would have been the obvious thing to do uh, because a lot even as, as much as I really enjoyed uh, the Peter Jackson films um, you know, it's just that there's so much in the books that you can't do it in a film, no matter, despite how long those movies were, uh, you, you you couldn't fit it all in. But with a TV series, he probably could, at least more so than a movie could. Um, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> and it's just as well. I think uh, the Peter Jackson films are as good as it's going to get for uh, a film medium to uh, ad adapt uh, that story the, uh, it's for the rest of it it's all within the original books and that's it and that's well and good and fine the story ends uh, Tolkien himself toyed with a possible sequel to it he started it and then thought nah and he left it alone and everybody else should leave it alone too because <laughs> the, the world has already spoken as I said it's third only to the Bible and the Quran <laughs> Um, so I think that speaks for itself there. So the, the only interesting thing here is the amount of money Amazon spent. And the idea was that Amazon is so big because they're, you know, they're a, a, basically a shipping company for products that other people sell. And uh, the, the idea was that they have FU money. But to maintain a uh, movie or a TV uh, studio, uh, that's a lot of money even for them and if it fails uh, that could hurt all the other productions and they might have to seriously rethink this in the future uh, for a while I think they could bounce back but uh, what an embarrassment this is because uh, this is almost CW level dialogue uh, between them and uh, it's only two episodes of sure 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 but uh, no and uh, House of the Dragon beats this hands down. House of the Dragon mops the floor of it, despite all the problems there, because Game of Thrones, you know, ended so badly. And that's a, a, a nasty uh, stain that's going to haunt that series as it goes. But two episodes in, it's pretty good. It's just basically a soap opera set in that fantasy world, but it works. And uh, the performances are much better. Uh, I heard someone say, oh, man. The effects and the look of Power of the Rings uh, puts uh, House of the Dragon to shame. No, it doesn't. No, it's basically on par. It's just House of the Dragon utilizes uh, effects and whatnot for their story better, and they structure their story better. And it, 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 it's all about the castle intrigue prim primarily at, at the moment uh, and dealing with uh, who's going to take the, the throne and all that. And uh, whereas this is, where is Sauron? And, uh, well, he's hiding somewhere. And then he'll show up and you'll do your terrible ripoff of uh, Lord of the Rings. And that's it. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, of the two, how's the dragon win uh, wins? Despite all its problems, too. You know. Uh, other than that, um, I can't recommend this at all. Uh, and in fact, I only watched it because Doomcock asked me to for his uh, Sunday show. So I watched them and all that. But uh, my suggestion is uh, go watch the Peter Jackson movies or even the Ralph Bashke uh, cartoon. You know, well, of course, read the books, but uh, probably don't want to buy any of the new bu uh, publications because they got the covers of the Rings of Power on them. <laughs> See, they got to ruin everything. Uh, but that's about all you can do. That's about it. All right, hopefully I won't take this much time on the third episode. I'm pretty sure I won't. Uh, but there you go. And uh, depending on how my health is, because it hasn't been that great lately, I'll be talking about this on Doomcock's show as well. There you go. Rings of power. <laughs>